Hey everyone, after developing my uh, hard surface kit bash collection, which is available on my Gumroad, I thought of another tip to um, tell you guys about. And this tip is to support your support loops. So if I come to this particular piston here, you can see that on this object, I have support loops. And then I have, I'm, I'm basically bracing those support loops with another loop on the, the flat side of it. And I have the exact same thing going on over here. So we've got our support loops and then a bracing of the support loop. And what this means is that it's going to hold its form really nicely without having to add a crap ton of divisions. Because I see a lot of people when they do sub-D modeling, they add a lot of divisions on you know, these sorts of objects. Whereas in reality, you can keep this entire thing clean and just brace it on either sides and it means that your models are a lot more optimized um, so if I just zoom in to the side here and I give this a smooth so right now we're smoothing the object and it'll be perfectly flat along this edge here until it gets to this brace loop here and then when it hits this loop then it will start to kind of like go down a little bit versus if i did not have these these loops there would be ever so slight bowing i mean i'm, I'm exaggerating it but we don't want that we want this this length to be as straight as possible So if I'll just undo a few steps here, bring that loop back. So if I dissolve this, watch what happens here. You get this ever slight bowing, right? And we don't want that. And to get a clean mesh, to get like nice smooth sub D normals, we'll have to subdivide a lot more times than if we just had this bracing loop. Because essentially, yeah, that, that bowing is going to give you just weird normals. So if you want a nice, clean, optimized mesh, support your support loops. And the same thing applies for, you know, any kind of rounded forms. See, right here, I've got some roundedness. And instead of just having it, you know, rounded edge to rounded edge here, I'm bracing it. Because I want to ensure that this line here is perfectly straight. Versus if I remove these, again, you're going to have this very subtle bowing. And I mean, this is, this is not essential but it just it makes your models a lot cleaner and like i said allows you to optimize them a lot more like on this cylinder here so same thing on this um, electrical box that i've made here we have our rounded forms and then everywhere that there's a rounded form i have a bracing support loop to ensure that this line is as flat as possible it's just good practice. And this leads me to another topic, and that is the UV smoothing. So if you use the standard default UV smoothing on an object like this, you're going to get some crazy distortion. I'll just reveal seams here. So I've got a seam running down here. And actually, I'll just rip this object off. I've just gone to solid view for a second here and isolate it. So when we subdivide this, if we have keep boundaries on, so I'll just duplicate this up and I will apply the modifier. So we've just smoothed it and I'll go into my UV layout. Isolate these two again. Isolate the one we just subdivided. Hide that. You can see that these loops, because they're frozen around the border, we're getting huge amounts of distortion. You can see these loops getting dragged down here. Whereas this loop should be going straight across 
around the seam, it's diverting downwards. And this whole diversion is just distortion. And I can show you this with a checkerboard. And that's nasty, right? And that brings me to the point of which UV smoothing to use. The default one is actually not good to use because in order to reduce this distortion using the default, I'll just duplicate this up again, I have to add a crap load of loops. So now if we smooth this with those loops added, you can see there's a lot less distortion. There is still some distortion going on because wherever there's an imbalance of polygons, so if, if I'll just, sorry, I'll just undo this a few steps, sorry. Because this, this is like a short distance and then a long distance, you're always going to get distortions in these areas. So unless you have like a perfect amount of loops like that running all down your cylinder or whatever object it is, you're always going to get distortion there, right? So the only way to avoid that distortion is to increase the, the uh, loop count down the lengths of your object uh, using keep boundaries. But this is why we don't use keep boundaries. At my particular studio, we use keep corners. And that will keep only the corners um, hard. So if I change this UV algorithm, and I'll just add a texture to this guy for now. If I change this to keep corners, and then I smooth it, look at that. Even with absolutely no spans down here, we get no distortion. Absolutely none. So I'll just duplicate this up, and I'll just smooth it and apply that so you can see what's going on. So apply it, have a look. So basically, what is going on is that this corner here, well, that is what's considered a corner. Everything else gets smoothed. And you can see that we don't get any of those loops being pulled down to where they were originally anchored. Um, this is the optimal UV smoothing for basically every asset. The only downside to this UV smoothing algorithm is that if I, I'm just going to add a loop for the sake of it, for demonstration purposes, just to show you what's going on here. Oops, sorry. We'll just expand these out. And actually, let me just take that back. I will make this geometry a little bit like that. And we will unfold again. Right, so now we've got some you know, variable width down here. So to get to the final form of the mesh, we have to subdivide a few times, right? And because of this, so if, if I just duplicate this object, apply the divisions, you see what goes on here? So the border is not being maintained. Like the previous smoothing algorithm that I showed you, it maintained that sharp, it would have maintained that sharp edge, but also introduced a lot of distortion. So what happens is if you're UV, using this UV smoothing uh, algorithm and you're texturing a sub D object, you need to pre subdivide. And depending on how low resolution that mesh is, you may need to subdivide quite a few times. So because this is just like egregious, like it's, you have to, to get to the final mesh. Obviously, this is not what it's going to look like at render time. It's going to look something like, you know, that. And because we want the UV boundary to be best represented by what the final form of the mesh is going to be, you texture on the pre-subdivided model. So ideally with this, if I was to take this particular object in for texturing, what I would do is I'd probably have to smooth this maybe three times. I'll just duplicate that up. So because th this edge here, this UV edge, is going to get smoother every single time that you subdivide versus that. You know, if I take the low res um, 
mesh in for texturing and I do all my texture painting on this and then I take it into the rendering engine and then I find that the seams don't line up because obviously it's going to be smoothed at render time we're going to have a problem right so whenever I'm working on assets I always use keep corners it's the most distortion free um, method for uh, you know most assets in general especially hard surface given that we get a lot of distortion where, wherever there's um, uneven topology whenever we're using keep boundaries right ultimately though it comes down to what your particular studio uses if they use keep boundaries use keep boundaries um, you need to make sure it's all consistent down throughout the pipe uh, but just to really hammer home how important it is to texture on pre-subdivided assets, I'm just going to accentuate this. We'll just get rid of that. So we'll just beef that up. All right, something like that. And if I just duplicate this up, give it one smooth. You know, obviously this is going to be too low res because it's going to smooth between like hair and hair. So that may not be enough. Let's try two. Mm, yeah, pro see for this asset, you're probably going to need... Oops, sorry, I need to redo that. For this asset, you're probably going to need three. That's probably a decent amount. There's enough of the curvature being worked out that you're not going to get any um, artifacting around the seams and yeah that pretty much sums up the uh, the theory of supporting your support loops and uh, if you appreciate this sort of content please go and check out my gum road and uh, like and subscribe thanks everyone